The price of a home or rent in a major city is absolutely unaffordable by any metric. People simply cannot pay $4,000 per month for rent even if they make a great salary. There have been attempts to control rent, they have given tax incentives for first-time homebuyers, and they have kept interest rates ultra low for a decade. You know there's a serious problem when people start to live in a dormitory-style living space for a high price. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to talk about the two ends of the spectrum. I'm going to show you the multi-million dollar properties and at the very other end, the dormitory style living arrangements that so many people are moving into today. Let's get into it right away. Would you pay $1,200 a month for a bunk bed in a shared space? Renters in Los Angeles and San Francisco are opting for pods in communal home with a desk, locker, and personal TV. I'll show you some pictures here in a minute, but this is something that I have covered before. We are talking about a dorm, essentially. Like you're living on residence at school, and this is the type of facilities that are not for those who are in school anymore, but for people who cannot afford to get their own place. They can't afford a normal roommate scenario where you share half-half. This is something that has been going on in these major cities like LA, like San Francisco, and like New York that are quite frankly too expensive for the average person to be able to afford. PodShare, which has six locations across Los Angeles and San Francisco, provides 10 to 15 bunk beds per space. So imagine you have 10 to 15 roommates in a particular location, and to me, this is fine if you want to do it. If people want to either go to these major cities, work, live, play in them, and then save up as much money as possible in order to then move out somewhere else, or maybe because you want to get that perfect job that you feel is right for you in that area it's understandable however if the person doesn't want to be in this sort of scenario and they are forced into it because they simply don't have the money and they are stuck there for some particular reason this isn't good we should not have this existing but what has happened with our money is that it has very little value look at the average rent for los angeles and san francisco they are 2300 and 3900 hundred dollars per month respectively. That is expensive any way that you look at it. Even if an individual is making very good money, this still is going to burden them because you have to add food and electricity and other expenses. And quite frankly, many people cannot afford it. Now they start to live outside of these areas and they travel for multiple hours per day and it just breaks them down slowly but surely. At the very bottom, it says that the rules of each of these spaces include the lights off by 10 a.m. And it just made me think of something like a jail where they are setting the rules. And I understand the way that this works. The system needs to keep orderly to have 10 or 15 people live in a system like this. And for it to actually go smoothly, it, I understand that. I'm just trying to say that this is something that is really wacky to me. But I'd like to hear your opinion on it. Would you ever live in a place like this or does it make more sense to live in an area that is simply more affordable not necessarily a small town in the middle of nowhere but another city that is perhaps more appropriate for you in your particular circumstances so here is one image right here and you can see the four pods bunk bed style. Everybody has their little TV on the wall. You can see that stairs going up in the middle and it looks like these people here have very limited space in where they can keep their stuff. They have a locker outside of this and all the facilities are shared. So this is another view basically looking downward and you don't have much space in between you and the person in the pod over across there. They're don't even want you bringing any people to come over they have a limited space and you simply have to leave if you want to see some of your friends you have to leave it says make friends with the people there because you're not going to be able to bring any people with you of course you could see all the details here in these images there's also some notes at the bottom I didn't want to touch on that I just want to show you how living in these arrangements really is for people you could see how this is I don't know if this is more of a mock-up or this is how it actually 
is to the people, but it doesn't necessarily look to be the most fantastic in my opinion. But again, I want to know what you think. So here's the kitchen area where everybody shares. Here's the desk area. Here are the lockers. You can see the pod on the left-hand side, just showing you the proximity there. And last, just wanted to show you this one, which basically gives you a look at what it would look like when it's completely empty. Okay, so that's one end of the spectrum. Let's take a look at the other. It's a great time for billionaires to splurge on real estate. Prices are being cut. Camels at open houses offer no help. We are showed some examples here in this article. I will link it in the description, but I'll just show you this one for now. You can see literally they got a camel in order to greet people on the way in to this particular extravagant showing of this home and it is being cut in price over and over and over and over again. This is what they have been doing now because there aren't enough buyers to be able to get in this market when the prices of the homes are a hundred million they're 150 million and we see ones going up all the way to 500 million dollars but they keep cutting the prices because quite frankly the market is not as hot as it once was I mean I could scroll through here I can show you some of these pictures but essentially what we're looking at is these excessively expensive homes that are only able to be purchased by a very small select few individuals and that just gives you an idea of how long these have to sit on the market for before there will be a buyer and before the price is going to get cut significantly. So once the prices do get cut, you could see buyers come in, some of these billionaires, they might swoop in and purchase some of these. But I just wanted to show you the fact that you have these homes that are put on the market in this range, 100 million plus and these are in these major cities like New York, for instance. And then you have Podshare, which seems to me as being the complete opposite. Things are certainly topsy-turvy today. The middle class is vanishing. There is no doubt about that. And we are going to really feel it as the people who are now in the very young generations today will find themselves in big trouble when they, let's say, get out of school or they're moving into the workforce and they are trying to afford real estate. At this point, something has to give. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you hit the thumbs up button, when you hit that like button, you are supporting me so i do appreciate that very much if you want the financial education you were not taught in school well then these two books have everything you need you can get all the details at the link in the description it'll tell you everything you need to know if you want the audiobook that's available at themoneygps.com Wait a second, don't go anywhere. This video here is going to continue on this discussion. You definitely want to watch it. Click on it and I will see you there.